Okay, in this step, um, we're going to finish out the perch platform, which I have here. Mine still has the um, hardware in it from way earlier on when we cemented this together, so I'm going to remove those. We don't need those anymore because everything's cemented together now, so this is just one less thing to rust in the rain. So, before we move on, we'll discuss top and bottom here. This is the top of the perch platform, and you can tell that because you can see um, the entire uh, perch hook here, uh, whereas on the bottom side you only see this little bit that sticks out. So, this is the side that will face up and that birds will land on. And um, what we're going to do now is install some traction tape to make that uh, easier to do. So, what I have here is a roll of one inch wide traction tape. Um, this project, this part of the project, I should say, calls for uh, 24 square inches of this, so I'm going to cut myself off two 12-inch sections of this tape. And I just have this pair of uh, just rough-use scissors that I use for this. It's not, um, traction tape isn't a great thing to cut with your favorite scissors, but I've got a scrub pair for this kind of work. There. <clears throat> So now I have my 24 square inches of traction tape here in the form of two 12 inch long strips that are one inch wide. Um, and uh, I want to talk a little bit about coverage here on the lid, on the perch platform I should say. And um, so we've figured out, you know, through all of our field testing that the places that the birds are likely to land are along these three edges here of the perch uh, platform. So we're going to want to make sure we get those covered pretty well with traction tape. And we also need to make sure we cover this front edge fairly well with traction tape um, because this is where the birds will stand. My hand here is where the food basket will be, so the birds will need to be able to safely stand here on the perch and get at that. Um, over time, birds will use the entire surface of the perch, so we're going to actually cover all of it in traction tape, but we're going to, as I said, concentrate most of our traction tape around the uh, outer edges of the perch platform. Um, now, <clears throat> if you don't have traction tape, um, we've stated in the documents that you can use um, duct tape, and that's true. Um, traction tape obviously works um, just because it's gritty and has a high, you know, high friction. Um, if you were to use duct tape, duct tape would work because um, it's the, the, the PVC jacket of the tape is soft enough for birds' um, claws to sort of dig into. So um, you may not be able to handle um, duct tape. Uh, exactly as I'm going to handle the traction tape here because this actually has a paper backing which I haven't removed yet which lets me do more you know with shaping um, the tape before I apply it so um, you may have to just kind of feel your way through this if you're using duct tape or even just go with um, uh, a stripe of it around uh, all three sides and, and some in the middle but we're going to proceed as though you have traction tape and uh, now that I've talked about where the traction tape should go you know, this front edge, this side edge, this side edge, and to some extent in here. You can cover this however you like. Um, but I'm going to show you a trick, um, well, not a trick, but I'm going to show you a pattern that I like to use, which I think makes the, um, the crow box look really cool. Um, and the way that I do that is I just take my scissors and I begin cutting this tape into triangles of various sizes. Some fat, some skinny, you know, some are... Um, equilateral triangles, some isosceles, whatever. You know, does, that geometry doesn't really matter so long as you cut these into to triangles. And um, just remember that you're going to need some small ones too, so don't cut all of them super large. And I'm not going to make you watch me cut all this tape into triangles, so we'll speed this part up here and I'll just get through. And when you get to this last one, just make sure that however you cut it, just cut it into two final triangles. Okay, so now I have 24 square inches of traction tape cut into triangles. And uh, this next part is a little time consuming, but uh, it's just part of the deal. I mean, if you want the same pattern, and you can tell by the, looking at the end of this video whether you, you want the same pattern that I'm creating. So the next step is to go through these and just snip off 
the points, all three points of every triangle, so that you end up with um, something shaped a little bit more like this. So I'm going to, again, speed this up so you don't have to watch me do this to every one of these, but, um, you know, just uh, clip those points off, cut some deep, some shallow, some at weird angles if you want. Um, kind of doesn't matter. Okay, so now we have all those uh, points chopped off, those triangles, and um, all of these small pieces are garbage. So I'm going to get those off my bench. There we go. So now what we have is a pile of uh, six-sided shapes, each with three long sides and three short sides. And uh, now I'll kind of show you how I apply these for the shape that, or sorry, for the pattern that I was talking about. So. Just take any old one and uh, peel the adhesive back. Well, before I do that, let's talk about what I'm going to do. So I'll lay some of these out. So what I usually like to do is take one and align one of its long edges with this edge of the, um, the uh, perch platform here. And then just take any old uh, next piece and just line up one of its long edges parallel to the long edge of the one we placed first. And that pattern just continues um, around the crow box. Just keep taking parts from your uh, little pile of uh, traction tape here and just align it so that one long edge of the new one is parallel to the long edge of some existing one. And um, if you continue to do that, like this, you'll see that uh, you get kind of a cool pattern, breakup pattern that looks a little bit like, I don't know, a tortoise shell or giraffe kind of. Um, but this is the way that I like to proceed doing this and um, sometimes you may want to try to get one into a space like this where it's you know mostly parallel to two others but that's totally up to you. You just want to make sure that you focus your coverage on these three edges first and uh, and, and cover pretty um, pretty tightly here. Put the uh, pieces somewhat close together and then as we get into this center area which is used less by the birds we'll um, we'll uh, start spacing those pieces out a bit more. So I'm going to start for real now. Uh, and you may want to give this a quick brush down because um, when I cut this traction tape my scissors throw grit all over my bench so I don't really care if it's on the bench but you don't really want it under your or sorry on top of your perch platform. If you can help it just be cleaner this way. So peel off that backing paper and align that long edge parallel to the front edge of the uh, perch and uh, push that in and now I'm just going to kind of go on building this pattern and I'm also going to run this in fast forward because uh, it's boring to watch me peel these and I don't really have more to say about this process just kind of got to get through it so um, we'll get the traction tape placed on this and then we'll discuss uh, how to um, get the, uh, the perch platform installed and tuned for your bird weight so we'll do that right after we finish with the traction tape. Okay, so now we've reached the point where those edge, those edges, the places that we've observed birds most likely to try to land on the crow box are, are uh, reinforced with, uh, not reinforced, but you know they're set up with, um, with uh, traction tape. Now we're going to fill in the rest of the lid, but these gaps, which I've kept, I don't know, maybe uh, between one eighth and three, uh, sorry, one eighth and uh, three sixteenths of an inch. Um, I'm going to start spacing those out a little bit more now so the pattern is going to get less dense towards the middle as we use these remaining pieces to, um, to fill in the pattern. So just uh, you know, keep spacing out the ones you add more and more and um, we'll be able to get the coverage we want with um, just these remaining bits.
Okay, so at this point I've used up all my tape, um, and uh, I have a couple things that look like bald spots to me in the in the grip tape. So I'm going to take just a little bit more and just make a couple sort of custom pieces to fill that in. Um, so just make me some small triangles here. Cut the tips off. Place those in the spots that look a little bare. Just so the pattern, even though the pattern is uh, tighter at the edges than it is in the middle, still kind of want to have a, a consistent appearance for the most part, as best I can anyway. So I chop some of these thin pieces down. And for me, that lid is uh, this perch is finished. I like the way this looks. Um, there's a lot of coverage um, on the part of the traction tape. There's no real places where a bird could put their foot and not uh, have their toes span at least um, a couple of uh, pieces of traction tape. So that looks good to me. Um, and it's important that we did this now because um, the tape does change the weight of the perch platform a little bit. And the next thing we're going to do is... Um, we're going to talk about how to stuff the insides into our crow box and uh, put the perch on and get the um, weight of the perch return tuned. So I'm going to take a break here and um, sweep off my bench because it's covered in um, sand from this, uh, this traction tape and then we'll get back to it.